No. I mean, nice to keep a little pack of wet wipes handy in case you have a real bad one. But, you know, for the most part, toilet paper does a fine enough job. Oh, yeah. I have a backup. Sure. There's not, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> but um, let me ask Eric, did you ever think that we would be doing a podcast? We'd be talking, talking about wiping our asses. <laughs> well, it's toilet paper has been a big theme this whole year. It's true. It is not very for true. us, but but for the world in general, toilet paper has been a big thing. <laughs> and I'm sure that's got something to do with this. Like people saying, oh, well, maybe we don't need toilet paper. It's because they don't want to go through another stupid <laughs> round of hoarding and shit. <laughs> Which we already know is going to happen again this fucking winter. So, <laughs> Yeah, I don't understand why and I don't care. Exactly. <laughs> really, I went, yeah. I went through about a roll and a half during the whole hoarding thing. So. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> like, like we, we we picked up some like before all this shit, like literally before all that shit started, we picked up a pack of toilet paper and it lasted throughout the entire fucking pandemic. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> who are you people that are just, that, why do you need that much for one thing? <laughs> what exactly are you stocking up for? And, and just because you're going to be home and just because of the pandemic, are you planning on shitting that much more often? Like, I, I don't. Like, I get I it. The, the news is like a born laxative right now, but come on, seriously. <laughs> I have a shower know. after. <laughs> but I'm sure that's pro- part of this. Like, people are trying to get their reliance away from toilet paper in case another <laughs> crisis <laughs> comes up. <laughs> oh, it's just fucking funny. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, hey, Eric. Yeah. You, know, you know leotards? I do. Well, did you know who in, who actually popularized them? I, I, Olivia Newton-John? No. It was a man by the name of Jules Leotard. Oh. Yes. Well, there you go. This is also the same guy who invented the flying trapeze. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess they kind of go hand in hand, don't they? They kind of do. You need something that's going to be covering you, but still have the motion you need to do all that crazy weird shit. Um, it definitely makes sense. Uh, I I wonder if they have anything to do with the the guy I'm putting on my newest T-shirt, who's uh, just a Down syndrome guy with a unicorn horn, <laughs> and it says Unitard. <laughs> Don't wear that in public. <laughs> Fuck your get lynched. <laughs> you get lynched so bad. The unitard. <laughs> oh my god. No. <laughs> it was either that or upside down syndrome. I haven't decided which yet. <laughs> I mean, the the first one. Oh Jesus, that nails it. Um, yeah. Oh, way to go, uh, Billy Unitard. What was his name? Leo, 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 Leo Letard? Uh, <laughs> Leo Letard. Uh, no, Jules Leotard. Jules Leotard. There you go. You don't see a lot of dudes named Jules anymore. No, and it's cool because, I mean, it's sad because it's a pretty, I don't know, for some reason, I always find it, it's a powerful name for some reason. I like that as a guy's name. It's a powerful name. Well, the family Jules. Well, Exactly. Um, mainly because I'm also thinking of that um, fucking Tarantino movie with uh, uh, Samuel L. Jackson and uh, what's his fucking face? The, yeah, I I know the movie. It's Pulp Fiction. Yeah. I don't know what. what you're... Well, the uh, his name was Jules. James Samuel L. Jackson's name was Jules. What that was, was his character. That was his character's name. I don't remember that. Well, that's because they don't actually reference it by this first name. I think it's only mentioned once. Maybe twice. Oh, well, I've seen that movie enough that I would remember. <laughs> One of my I favorite jokes movie. in the world is in that movie. Oh, yeah? Uh, the, the joke that Uma Thurma, uh, Thurman tells um, oh, yeah. on the pilot show. I fucking love that joke. For those that don't know the joke, the punchline, catch up. Let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody knows that. Love that joke. I don't know, dude. I've told that joke to a lot of people, and there's a lot of people that have not heard that joke for some weird reason. And most are like, oh, I love the movie Pulp Fiction. Oh, yeah, catch up. What? And then you just tell the joke, they're like, that's nowhere in the movie. Yeah, you fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
clearly you're smoking too much weed before that movie starts. <laughs> well, you better tell the joke now. <laughs> There's a family of tomatoes, and they're walking down the street. It's a mama tomato, a papa tomato, and a baby tomato. And the baby tomato keeps falling behind. So they keep telling him, well, get up here, and he doesn't. So the papa tomato walks back and squishes him and says, catch up. Good stuff. <laughs> just, ah, just makes me happy to recite that gag. Ah. Oh, my favorite joke's also from a movie, so I'll let it go. There you go. <laughs> I appreciate that. Oh, man. So, interesting thing I did not know about this, but um, Pharaoh Ramses IV, uh, who died in 1149 BC, um, when they were doing the mummification process, they had removed his eyes and replaced it with two small onions. That's stupid. It is stupid. But they, uh, ancient Egyptians, used to associate the onion with mysticism and thought them to possess magical powers. You can build well, a fucking pyramid, but you think onions have magical powers. All right, whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's why they're such an advanced nation now. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> um, it worked well for them. Yeah. We've next one I'm going to bring up. We actually briefly spoke about something about this not too long ago. Uh, I think it was actually about a week or so ago. Um, uh, the use of um, maggots as a form of ma- medical. No. Um, no. Me. <laughs> no, because you said there's no fucking way in how you do it. Um, well, the interesting thing is, I what I didn't realize this was, um, although it had been used in the U.S. in California specifically since the early 1990s, it actually didn't get approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration until 2004. So they said, okay, well, this go. actually works. That's how things go with them. That's right. It's just really fucking gross. That's why we don't have any COVID vaccine. Mm. And, and we never. You, no, exactly. Um, you know quite a bit about the history of fireworks, do you not? Um, no, I know. Maybe more than the average bear, but. Uh, well, you know what country created them? Well, China. They That's created right. everything. But do you know? Why they created them? Uh, probably for uh, some stupid festival. Uh, no, it was actually to ward off evil spirits with yes. the loud banging noise. <laughs> <Same thing. laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, you're probably right. This probably was a festival they set up for it. I'm so glad I never like have, was raised in a culture where I had to ward off spirits. Like, my culture was, we're very not, there's just no spirits around for us to ward off. Yeah. I got better uh, things to do. I guess that's a good thing. I'm, it makes me happy. I'm glad I didn't have to deal with that. And then, like, don't now, like, oh, I got to go look for a job, but I got to ward off these spirits. That, I just, that stuff bugs me. <laughs> it seems counterproductive. I can't even argue that if I wanted to. But I, it worked well for the Chinese. That's yeah, right. Clearly, because they're still around. So it worked better, better for them than it did for the Egyptians, I'll tell you that much. For now. <laughs> we'll see how this World War Three thing goes for them. Yeah, exactly. Right now. <laughs> um, uh, Neil Armstrong's famous lines once he stepped off of the modular thing and put his foot on the uh, on the moon for the first time. Everybody remember those lines? One small step yeah. for man, giant leap for mankind. Uh, what people don't know as much is what he followed that up with. His very next set of words, which was the surface looks fine and powdery. I can pick it up loosely with my toe. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's something. Um, <laughs> my my only question is when he says toe, why was he not in his spacesuit? Because they were on a sound set in California. 
I think we just found the true proof of how we know <laughs> it was all fake because he was using his toes to feel the dirt. And you don't hear a lot about Buzz Aldrin's famous first words when they got there, which was, damn it, Neil, I was supposed to go first. <laughs> damn it, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> so. You suck, Armstrong. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm to cut. Oh man. Um, random weird fact about um, uh, North Korean dictator King Jong Un. Um. He uh, he proposed to alleviate hunger in his country by breeding giant dog-sized rabbits. And that would work. It would, except for it didn't, because the 12 original breeder bunnies were eaten at, the, at his birthday party in 2007. Yeah, that's bad planning. Like, <laughs> we only have the 12? Yeah, fucking bring them over. We're going to have a fucking dinner. <laughs> fucking, and you run a country? God, you're an idiot. <laughs> Oh, well, that's a good that's a good dictator right there. Like I could breed enough food for everyone in the country to eat all the time, or I could just eat these now myself and have one great meal. I think I'll go with that. <laughs> that sounds better for the country, for the greater good. <laughs> oh man! Well, if you've ever wondered where. Swans, doves, turkeys, sparrows, ah, starlings. If you ever wondered where they came from, I now know. Dinosaurs. No, they came because um, um, this uh, bird dude by the name of Eugene Shefflin, um, he decided after reading the works of William Shakespeare that he was going to import every kind of bird mentioned in Shakespeare's work that were not already present in the U.S. Hmm. So there you go. That's weird. Yep. That's just a bored dude with money, apparently. Shakespeare had a lot of influence on a lot of people. Yeah, there's no denying that. Um, still no exact real proof that he was a dude. <laughs> um, many people believe he was several people. Many people believe it was a group of people, and Shakespeare was actually a name, kind of like Kids in the Hall. Really? Um, lots of different theories about who he was. Huh. Hmm. I'd just like to know how that changes anything, but okay. It doesn't really. No. Well, it kind of <laughs> does, because a lot of people think it's a dude. If it turns out it wasn't a dude, you know, there's a lot because a lot of it's well known now that he didn't finish a lot of his plays, and then other people finished them after he died. No, yeah, huh? and then that's that's just led to all kinds of weird theories. So who knows? Hmm. All that. I'm setting up my computer again for hmm. our next podcast, so hopefully it will be a little better than this. One. Yay. Um. You always know as a kid you're always afraid of the boogeyman. I was terrified. Well, do you know where that term came from? I assume it's some weird 60s dance thing. No, it's <laughs> actually from the Middle Ages. And it was actually taken from the term of buggy man, which was used to describe the uh, the buggy man's job was to collect corpses uh, that people that died from the Black Flag. Sure. So you better watch yourself or the buggy man will get you. So that's that kind makes of where, sense. And where that came from. I like that stuff. Thing. Yeah. I like the course in like word origins. I think word origins are neat. Oh, fully agree. I love where some of that shit comes from. Especially when you look at some like the old like when you like like the old children's songs we would sing when we were kids and shit like, you know. Oh, those um, are all Ring around the rosy and things like that. It's just so evil. <laughs> They're always evil. Yeah, it's great. And you're seeing the kids like, ah, ah.